uh, all day here from the 4 a.m. You came here in Saratoga, World Horses. It's a beautiful, you know, a beautiful feeling and it's nice to be here. Oh yeah, of course it's exciting to be back at Saratoga, come on. Hi there, it's WAMC News Director Ian Pickus. And on this episode of the WAMC News Podcast, we feature interviews with two key figures in the busy summer racing season now underway in Saratoga Springs. Well, thousands of visitors are flocking to the spa city for racing, nightlife, and the arts. It's also the first summer tourism season for City Public Safety Commissioner Jim Montagnino. The Democrats sat down with WAMC's Southern Adirondack Bureau Chief Lucas Willard at City Hall. We think we have COVID in the rearview mirror finally, and certainly that's brought a lot of people out. People are just aching to have some fun, and we can see the city's already been swelling in the weekends preceding the opening of the track, so we know it's going to be very busy. Just talking to restaurant owners and hotel owners, their bookings are through the roof. It's a really good vibe. Police staffing levels are less than full right now. We're about two-thirds uh, active uh, members of the force right now, if I'm correct. Uh, so how has that been a challenge, and will there be enough adequate policing during the busy track days? Well, staffing's actually coming up. We have seven officers who are about to graduate the police academy. August 4th is their graduation. Now, they still have to be assigned to a field training officer, but they will actually be on the street uh, doing police work starting August the 4th. So we're very positive about that. That's, that's seven additional officers, and we have another half dozen or so who will be starting the academy later this month. Um, but for the first few weeks of the track season, they will still be in training. They'll still be in the academy coming on uh, before the busiest days of the track season, Travers, that sort of thing. Exactly, exactly. So you debuted a few weeks ago your patrol plan that included a 10-hour shift for police officers. Right now they have a 12-hour shift and you've uh, wor worked out an agreement with the police union uh, for a 10-hour patrol shift. However, there was some pushback from uh, other members of the city council in a June city council meeting. Have you had any conversations with the mayor or anyone else who is skeptical about the uh, patrol plan? There have been a lot of conversations going on. Uh, the, the PBA, the Police But Evidence Association, have their representatives meeting individually with the members of the council. Uh, we're starting, there are a lot of moving pieces involved in the plan. And for just by one example, with the, sh with the move to the 10 hour shifts, every officer would be on duty every Thursday. And what that does is provides an opportunity for a set training day. As it is now, police have to be paid overtime to come in on what would otherwise be time off for training sessions. By having the Thursday training day, we save a tremendous amount of money on overtime, which will help offset the costs of the full plan under the memorandum of agreement. What's the current estimate uh, for the full costs under the MOA? Well, without factoring in uh, the savings on the training and so on, if you just look at the raw number going out, we're looking at about $150,000 in additional cost for the balance of 2022, and then somewhat more going forward, of course, as, as the full year 23 comes up and then years past. Because part of the package involves uh, shift differentials and also uh, bonuses for longevity. Because what we want to do is two things. We want to become competitive with the rest of the region. Uh, our officers currently are not paid as well as any of the other departments nearby. In addition, uh, we want to reward officers for longevity and service so that we can keep uh, the best officers with the most experience. Um, let's focus on the downtown. There will be a lot of people, there already are a lot of people visiting the bars late at night. Uh, Gaffney's is back open, I understand, after reaching an agreement with the State Liquor Authority paying a $70,000 fine. Uh, have you been in conversation with the owners of Gaffney's or any of the other bar owners downtown about helping make Caroline Street a safer place this summer? Absolutely. In fact, I've been in regular conversation with the owners and managers of Gaffney's. Uh, 
their agreement with the city as well as the State Liquor Authority, which uh, our office was involved in brokering, involves a 10-point set of concessions that Gaffney's made to increase security and safety. It includes such things as a limitation to recorded music, no live music, no DJs, earlier closing time, they'll be, they'll be closing the doors at 1.30 a.m. and patrons out by about 2.30, 2.45, I believe. Also, security is better trained. All patrons are being wanded at a single point of entry. So security is, is now uh, in the fore where it hadn't been in the past with, uh, with Gaffney. So, so far, it's been a couple of weekends now that we've had success with that, and uh, it looks good going forward. The issue has come up in past councils and going back for at least a decade of changing the bar closing hours in downtown Saratoga Springs, though that requires action from the Saratoga County Board of Supervisors, and though the city has supported the move in the past, it hasn't been able to get past that county level. Uh, would you support a measure at the county level to roll back the closing hours? I, I certainly would. Uh, it's something that's been advocated for in the city for quite a few years. It's more than a decade, I know, that there's been an attempt at getting the county around to that way of thinking. It hasn't been successful. But we've seen, for example, with the voluntary agreement that Gaffney's entered into, uh, they, they will be closing their doors early. And there is one or more other of the bars that may end up with similar situations uh, with the SLA and with the city where, where we, we might have voluntary compliance with earlier closing times. There are some bars that, that already are voluntarily closing earlier than the 4 a.m. limit that uh, is currently set. So this isn't related to downtown policing, but Saratoga County was recently identified as an area where the monkeypox vaccine would be distributed in part due to the large amount of tourists. Lately, it's been New York City, which has been the focus of the state's efforts to vaccinate people against the virus. Have you had any conversations uh, with the county health department or anybody at the state level about distributing a monkeypox vaccine? I myself haven't had any conversations in that regard, though I know that our county supervisors uh, really have their finger on the pulse of that issue. Uh, they've taken the lead with regard to COVID, and I'm sure that they're going to have this under control as well. And I also understand that you've been in conversation with the Saratoga Springs City School District about school resource officers. Any information you can share about uh, the SRO program? Well, this is, uh, the current move is in the very, very earliest stages of discussion. Uh, we've had a school resource officer in the high school uh, very successfully for years. And recent events have prompted people contacting public safety and other officials uh, eager to have SROs added to the elementary schools. We have four elementary schools, four public elementary schools that are within the city limits. The school district is larger than the city itself, so there are a couple of elements. Cut the middle school and one of the elementary schools are outside of the city, so it wouldn't be within our direct purview. But the four elementary schools that are within the city limits, we're in the process of talking about getting school resource officers there. Anything else that you're looking forward to personally as your first uh, summer as public safety commissioner in Saratoga Springs? Well, I'm looking forward to what all indications show is going to be the biggest summer that the city has ever seen. Uh, all of the indications are it's going to be successful and peaceful. We've had wonderful success through the spring and early summer, and it looks like we're going to have uh, a very pleasant season. Thanks for sitting down with me, Commissioner. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Lucas. And Lucas also spoke on opening day with New York Racing Association President and CEO David O'Rourke. The new meet at Saratoga features improvements to the track itself and the backyard at a time when sports fans are changing the way they place their bets. The season also comes during a critical moment for the racing industry, which is under new federal oversight through the Horse Racing Integrity and Safety Authority. Here's Lucas's interview with O'Rourke. Yeah, we're excited. We're excited for uh, specifically the seventh race is of interest because it's the Wilson shoot. It's the first time we've uh, run a mile here on dirt in a real long time. Tell me about the shoot. Last uh, used in the 70s, I think? Yeah, and it, apparently they, they, they had something set up in the early 90s, temporary, I think. But really, it was dismantled in the 70s, and... Uh, 
There used to be a gentleman that worked for Naira, Bruce Johnstone, used to talk about it all the time. And uh, Glenn Kozak came to me uh, last year with the idea of building it back, so we can make it wider, a uh, little more, um, yeah, a little more fair, I guess you could say in some ways. And uh, that's that's what we've got going. That's not the only improvement at the track this year. There's the new pavilion, the post the, the bar, the post bar, and, the, and then the pavilion above yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, that you know, the post bar is always the most popular bar here. Um, it's a great time right after the races. It's packed. Uh, so the thought was, well, we need to redo the bar. What, what would really work well? And we never had, we didn't really had anything to overlook the paddock. So it started off with the concept of a second tier deck, and then it just kind of blew up further when we saw there was demand for kind of a group uh, groups that might want to be up there. There was that white tent there before. It was a white and tent. And it was, it was nice if you could get in, but it was a little hard to see. Yeah, and the circulation wasn't perfect. Um, this is just an improvement all around on that entire footprint. And I think it's going to be a hot spot. How's Naira feeling uh, with the numbers that have come in, the ticket sales, the advanced ticket sales for the 2022 season? Strong. Uh, there's a lot of demand. Um, you know, the, the energy level in town's really high. Uh, like I, I think we're in for a really good year. I think everybody, you know, the whole ecosystem up here is tied together. Uh, restaurants, hotels, the track. And it's gonna. It looks like it's gonna be a good year for everyone. So we're excited. Gas prices or inflation is gonna impact things at all. Uh, it's it's funny. I was just reading an article about travel and whatnot. I, I don't think this summer. I think people want to get out. I think the longer that um, you know, inflation sticks around, it's gonna have an impact. But I think this is. Uh, somebody made a comment. It's the summer of revenge travel. And uh, so I think we're going to be good. There is new oversight, congressional federal oversight of horse racing this year. The, how has that been for Naira? Have you been communicating with uh, Lisa Lazarus, oh, of who's course. setting up that, yeah. that commission? And, you know, we've gotten everyone signed up. We haven't had any issues. It launched July 1st, so we didn't have to scratch any horses. Everyone got signed up. New York's done really well with that. It's, really, it's rolling out in two phases. Um, right now, it's about the racetrack safety program and, and certain protocols like the WHIP protocol. And then into next year, it'll be the uh, medication component. So th the part that's rolled out so far, a lot of it's designed off of what we've done in terms of best practices with the racetrack maintenance. So uh, not, not a lot of impact on us. We, we've had all the resources in place and all we've been doing really all of this all along. And Ira advocated for the legislation. Absolutely, yes. From the get-go. Yeah, it allows you know, racing to to operate more like a league, we have consistency across jurisdictions. I think that's extremely important. How is the 2022 season compared to previous seasons when it comes to online betting? I know that with uh, you know mobile sports wagering, basketball, baseball, that kind of thing, that was a big rollout this year in New York. Yeah. Um, Naira has its Naira Bets platform. Correct. You know, what's the coordination like? Uh, how do you attract uh, gamblers who might be, you know, playing on other games, on other sports, to come into horse racing? I think the long play here is to integrate horse racing into the gambling, the sports betting apps. Uh, you know, they're all still launching. They're not even completely launched across the country yet. So there's a there's kind of a tech pipeline you got to get into for that. So in the near term, it's good. We have. Uh, we have partnerships with Caesars and MGM for horse racing, so they have their own standalone ADWs as well. And I think what you'll see over the next year, 12 months to 24 months, is uh, horse racing starting to appear on sports betting uh, apps. And I think that's kind of the uh, that's the goal. That, that that allows us to access a much larger population. It, it dovetails into everything we've been doing on television with Fox. So we think it's a huge opportunity for the game. To attract new fans, too. Correct. Sure. Just expose the product to a larger audience. Well, Dave, congrats on the start of the meet, and uh, here's to a good season. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. All right, that does it for this episode of the WAMC News Podcast. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, I'm Ian Pickus.